goodness. <sighs> Somebody's on there. Can't find myself. That's always a joy. <laughs> See, Facebook stayed just as crazy while I was gone. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Denise. Doesn't want to work. What's up with that? What the heck? No internet connection. I'm going to close the door so you don't have to listen to the family downstairs arguing. Hold on. They'll be leaving for soccer shortly. Hi, Julie. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Janet and Lori. Let's see. And Kay. Are you getting on here now? What is up with Facebook? It's crazy. Hi, Penny. Stranger. Oh, I missed you guys, too. All right. Let's see. There we go. Yeah, I know what I'm on. There we go. Okay. Turn the volume off. Now I'll be able to see it. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Susan. Who else did I miss? Let's see. And Linda. Watching from rainy northeast. Yeah, it's rainy here too. It's weird because I think we're getting your rain tomorrow, which will be major rain. So I'm guessing you're getting a lot of rain. Hi, Linda. High of 50s. Wow, that's crazy. So it's fall. First day of fall and the second day was like, bloop, it's going, huh? That's so funny. Hi, Cindy. Thank you all so much for joining me. Oh, thank you, Linda. That's so nice. It's nice to see you all on here as well. Hi, Brene. From Colorado. Think about John Denver. Rocky Mountain High. Hi, Julie. All right. So I have not been on here lately because school has been crazy and life has been crazy. And I just, mm, it's crazy. Julie has got a sunny fall day in North Dakota. Oh, that's beautiful, Julie. I'm happy for you. I have a good um, customer friend who lives in South Dakota. You're getting lots of rain for sure. Tornado. Yeah, we're going to get that tomorrow too. Raining in North Carolina, heavy rain, thunderstorm. Yeah, it sounds about right. We all the same. And Deanna's joining from Lucky Shamrock, Texas. Isn't that a fun place to live? Wow, that's cool. Cindy, how you doing out there on the West Coast? And Julie. So it's been really crazy busy. And I just haven't had time to do everything. And I keep saying I'm going to give live and I don't. Hi, Kathy. Nice to see you. And Margaret. And uh, life is just nuts. And I am thinking I'm going to have to do something really soon because Celebration is coming to a close on the 30th. It does run through September 30th, which is amazing. And it's Celebration version 2. So there were two Celebrations this year. Hi, Glenda. <laughs> and this is the brochure. In case you missed it, it still is live. The Bedazzling Specialty Paper that is sold out. There still is the penguins, as far as I know. And there came the dog. And the Peaceful Prince, which I want to show you a card. Not that, with that one, but I did a card with that one that was really fun. And the, the one that I like the most, and I actually got this out for this one, is In Your Words. Now, that one is a host set if you have a party or spend $300. And stop. Shaking the camera. Nobody likes the camera shaking. This is a really nice stamp set to have because it has a lot of fonts, has a lot of different sayings for lots of different stuff. And then the other one I got out is Massive Thanks. And 99% sure this one is in the annual catalog, Massive Thanks. I'm pretty sure it is. Not the mini catalog. So here. Is the mini in case you didn't see it this is like halloween christmas thanksgiving fall um there is i believe a hanukkah stamp in with one of the snowflakes um there's also some stuff that can kind of carry over through the rest of the year so it'll be interesting to see if some of that does the gorgeous leaves bundle is a really nice one as well in case you haven't seen that one but anyway i thought today we could make some thank you cards because I find that I have been needing thank you cards and 
I haven't had any. I've had to actually go searching for thank you cards. So, oh, Christian is so well. Thank you, Denise, for asking. He's happy to be in school. We actually have this weekend, the fall festival is coming up, which is for um, his school. And they have a carnival with rides. And it's funny because this week, being in school with the pre-4 kids, which a lot of them weren't in school last year because of COVID, and them seeing the rides and they're like, oh, what is that? Oh, are we, are you taking us to the fall festival? And we're like, uh, no, <laughs> your parents can bring you to the fall festival. And then one of them was like, do we have to wear a uniform? <laughs> which is so cute. They're really so cute. They are, but we have 20 this year, which is a lot of kids. So that's kind of crazy also. But Jack left when he comes back in, I'll scratch him for you. <laughs> But he is really excited for that, and he has soccer tonight, he has lacrosse, he is still doing like a camp, he's doing that tomorrow. So he's doing really well, he's doing his fall sports, and he's still loving school, so he's happy to be in school, which is great. So um, again, we're going to do some thank you cards, but I wanted to share this card that I created for a special group that I'm in. We create a card every month, and this actually uses the gingerbread and peppermint. I always want to say it backwards, but it was a really simple card to make. And you can see I stamped the snowflake kind of cookie in the background. And I have just layers of DSP. It's on old olive and on real red. And then I actually used the DSP and I'll show you what I did. It was really simple to cut out. So you can see these two are missing and I just popped them up. And then I was getting a little fun fancy and I just cut this on an angle and I popped this up as well. So really not a lot of work on this card because you have the DSP that you use for the majority of it. I added some Wink of Stella onto my little cutout pieces here and then I just put a few and they might be hard to see but I put some gems in the center just to kind of make it a little bit more fun. But instead of it being on a plain background, I just stamped so tone on tone. And some of them I inked full, some of them you can see are lighter. I did it without re-inking. So it was a really easy card to make. Uh, the DSP layer was three by four and then I just went up an eighth of an inch. And I do have a uh, full color PDF for this. So if you um, purchase something, and I have another one, I have others as well. But if you purchase something for me this month, you'll definitely get this as a free PDF. But we have lots of fun stuff coming up specifically for Christmas, which is always good because I know people are always searching for ideas. And then um, in case you don't remember, because it's been so long since I was live, we created these the last time I was live, which was, I think, in the beginning of September. And we used some of the cork paper and we stamped on it. And then this one was just really simple tone on tone color. So what I'm kind of figuring we will do today is something that's sort of similar to this because I figure if you are trying to make a bunch of thank you cards, you really want to speed it along. DSP is a great way to do that. But another thing I was going to do and I have my die cutting machine here is I grabbed one thing in particular, which is the Daisy garden. So I thought, and I'm going to try to line this up the way I think I have it in my mind. But again, we're going to go with simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a layer of four and a quarter. I'm trying to think, do I want to do it full? I'm going to do full, full size front. So it'll be four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to die cut a rectangle out of it. I'm going to lay it onto my card and then we're going to stamp this and then we'll put some thank yous and then I have a couple other ones kind of with the same idea but we'll do it with something similar but kind of simple so everything we're trying to do today is simple that way maybe you can make a bunch of them at the same time and you won't have to fret about not having thank you cards like again I really need to make I need to do a class with just thank you cards because I I guess I haven't made them for a while and I've gone through all the <laughs> the thank you cards I have which is a lot of cards and then the other thing that I was contemplating doing a class on so if this is something you're interested in um, I know I did classes to go a while back kind of when everything was going on with COVID because we couldn't really do classes in person and I know there's probably a bazillion of these out there but I have several really great cards with nature's harvest with the bundle so if that's something that you think you're interested in leave a comment on here and I'm going to check it afterwards. Um, if you could just leave hashtag or pound for us old people, because I still say pound 
nature's harvest as a comment. That way I can kind of gauge the amount of people because otherwise I'll just put these cards out as simple cards. But I have enough of them and they're very different. Really good techniques. Two of them are really simple and two of them are not complicated, but they definitely require some effort, which is fun because you can do different stuff with them. But I've been hanging on to these and I'll show you one little sneak peek of one of the things. So if that gives you an idea of what it is. But they are very fun cards, but they're also simple enough that anyone can make them. However, if you needed to have something more of a challenge, you could certainly make it that way for yourself as well. So let me move this Christmassy stuff out of the way. Slide this over and I'm going to flip you down. I also am part of, and I know I mentioned this before, I'm part of a uh, co-op where we create the 13 days of it's either 12 or 13 days of Christmas and we have projects for every, I don't want to say it's every day of the week, but there's 12 projects. It's a full color PDF. It tells you exactly how to do it and everything. That set isn't available. Thanks, Jewel. Just thank you for that tidbit. I appreciate that. It's good to know. At least Jules watching my back. So thank you. Maybe it will. I'm hoping it'll come back in stock, but you know, at least now we know, but thank you, Donna. Now I know. And also the other thing is too, maybe you already own the set and you don't really know what to do with it. So that's kind of another thing as well. So I'm going to flip you down. So if you get sick, just look away for a minute and we're going to start with this very first one. Let's see, I have some of my measurements here all right <clears throat> so you can really use any color card stock for this and the reason being is because you're just using it as a mat so it doesn't really make a difference so let's go with just because i have a piece here i'm just going to use a piece of well this might kind of be cool we're going to use misty moonlight and the only thing i'm going to do is my piece that I'm going to use as my mask, I'm going to make sure it is thick white, okay? Ax Meyer. <laughs> you know, he. you could be right because that's kind of what he thinks. There's, I guess the world is full of crazy people and if you're in the vision of our yard, you are a threat because he is just a crazy, crazy, crazy dog. I mean, granted, he is a good do guard dog, but he's also just... A little nuts. So I'm attributing the little nuts to the German Shepherd because he is part Shepherd, part Lab. But man, I tell you what, the breeze blows at night and he is all over it. Where I have had to start occasionally playing. Uh, oh my goodness, something YouTube. So YouTube, in case you may have to find this for yourself, YouTube has a sound and I guess humans can't hear it because it's very rare that I can hear it occasionally something will come on but they have this sound that supposedly makes dogs stop barking so I've played it a couple times at night when you know you just can't possibly listen to a dog bark anymore and I'm like and worst of all I feel like it's our dog is barking at least he has a deep bark and it's not one of those kind of annoying kind of dog barks because that would really stink all right, so I am going to, I saw somebody said it was their first time watching. Well, from Canada. Thanks, Sharon. That's so nice of you to join me. I don't know how you found me, but I'm glad that you did. Maybe somebody that you're friends with shared it, which is pretty awesome. So thank you for joining. You're usually a little chatty and a little crafty. So I kind of lined this up the best I could. It didn't need to be exact. I used the stitched rectangles you could also use the stitched so sweetly dies if you wanted to have a little scalloping to it kind of just depends on what you want to go for with this image so i'm going to die cut this if you're new you know i still pre primarily use my big shot for everything so i'm going to put my i have my magnetic platform my die I try to keep my one plate that i don't cut with so just in case you have a problem where yours bow I use these. You can see they are very well used, and it is a very, very minimal bowing on this one. So 
Um, I just occasionally will flip the bottom one in a different direction. The other thing that you want to do when you have these with a straight line, you don't want to put them in straight because it's a lot of pressure from the roller on the straight edge. So kind of just put them slightly askew. It doesn't have to be a lot. So I'm going to run this through. Again, for this first one, I'm just kind of making a template to use. So... Oh, thanks, Sharon. Well, I'll tell you, you haven't missed anything in a while because I've kind of been a little bit uh, off of schedule. So I guess that's good for you. And, oh, this must be, this tape is, well, good thing I don't need this for something because this is not being very kind to my paper. That's okay. This was just a test piece, so no biggie. All right. Now, what I want to do, so this, let me see if this is half like I thought it was. I think this is... Five. Oh, this is a little short. Five and a quarter. All right, I'm not going to use this piece because I don't want to start patching things together from the get go. Five. What the heck? I must have cut the. I must have cut this when I was. Uh, it was cocktail time on Friday or something. I'm going to score this that way. I can still use this. So I'm going to score it in half at four and a quarter, and then I'm going to cut it. At five and a half. Oh, nobody broke in, huh? We're still alive here in the house. That's good to know, buddy. Came up here to tell me. Everything's good. It's like, by the way, mom, everything's good. So we could do this two ways. So to do one to start, let's do a tone on tone, and then we'll do a second one on white, okay? So what I'm going to do, keeping this again, because we have our halfway point, we have it lined up. And let me grab a little piece of this purple tape. See, wonder if it's because they left for. Yeah, I bet you it's because they left for uh, soccer. He was having a, a freak out. So I don't. I'm wrapping it around the back just because I'm not die cutting it. I'm just using it. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Now with these daisy stamps or these large background stamps, I should say. Typically, I just use them in my stamp case, but since I'm creating something with a what is the way I want to say this with a pattern, but I kind of want to make it so it's not really super um, centered. So I'm going to kind of set this off. So I think I'm actually going to pull out my Stamparatus. Okay. Let's see. Oh, here's one out already. I have so many Stamparatus. I could probably give them away. But I use them for classes, so <laughs> I kind of like having them. It's really, it's kind of nice to have some extras. All right, so I'm going to put this here. Now, granted, this is a red rubber stamp, so you don't need, let's see if I can refresh that. You don't need to have the foam pad, so I've already pulled that out. I'm going to kind of put this up here so I can line it up where I want it. Grab one of my magnets okay and let's see i kind of wanted this a little bit sideways and now that i'm looking at this i might have to move it over just a smidge no biggie i'll we'll go with what is that one and a half i'm lining it up okay all right so i'm going to close the window to pick up my stamp and let me just slide to the left. One second. Then I'm going to grab my Misty Moonlight. Frog tape is supposed to have a delicate tape. It's yellow. Bought it, but you haven't used it. Yeah, well, whatever I just had was definitely not delicate. That's for sure. It was, it was hungry. It was eating that paper. <laughs> All right, so... I'm going to stamp this. Remember, the white is just our mask. So if it gets on there, we're okay with that. So just going to give it a press. Nice part is, though, if you need to re-ink it, yep, which I'm going to go to the edge. Okay. Mm, I just want to get just this little part a little bit more. I'm actually going to just re-ink the whole thing. And then we'll 
mint tape. Hmm. I usually use purple tape, but I get, it just kind of depends on what I grab, honestly. Okay, so I feel like that's dark enough. We have a little bit of an edge here, and it could be because of the way I'm pressing this. Maybe it's not getting into the corner there. Oh, you know what I have? My stencil stop. Let me give that a press and see. Oh, that worked out pretty well. Now, here's the thing. I got this from Lisa at Crafter Solutions, but I'm not sure. I didn't watch her recent video if she's still kind of on a little bit of a break. So, uh, I don't want to tell you to go there, but she might, she might be back open again. Her and uh, her husband, John, they created originally the Tipsy, and then they kind of branched out a little bit. So, all right, so we have that. Now, granted, one thing I want to say, I have a little bit of a strange edging here, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I am going to just reuse this. So what I am also going to do is take my, let me move this over for a second, take my uh, little rag here and I'm just kind of wiping that extra ink off of the purple tape so I don't get it accidentally on something so it's just a very cheap microfiber cloth now I'm going to move this up here for a moment close this and I am going to grab just a very general brush and just kind of brush around the edges in case there's any globs of ink it may smooth the edge just a smidge. Okay, so this is going to be our card version number one. And I did just had it here. Do have my thank you. So we can make this so it's a very minimal kind of tone on tone thing. So let's see if we have thank you. Sometimes I like things to be kind of like centered to one space and sometimes not. So... If this was something where I had a, had it over a little bit more, so say if this flower wasn't here, and we also were very careful about not inking this little stem portion, so follow with me. So pretend that's not there. I probably would put this up here, but since we still have this flower, what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to just use this little piece here since we already goofed it up. And you could do Misty Moonlight, but since we're trying, we have tone on tone, and let me just see what this looks like. If it doesn't look good, we'll switch. So I have Bumblebee. Bumblebee seems a bit subdued, and I kind of want something that's a little bit brighter. So let me instead swap over and see what Mango might look like. So I kind of want something that's going to kick it up just a smidge. Okay. All right. The mango is nice. I do like that. So I'm going to now grab my layering circles. If you have the stitched circles, I think they would look more super, much more awesome. So I have my thank you. And do I want a straight circle or do I want a scallop? I'm not really a big scallop die person. I don't really know why. Let's see if this one's a little bit smaller. Yeah, that still fits. I don't really know why because I think it always looks cute on people's projects. But for some reason when I do it, I don't always think it looks as cute as everybody else's does. Let me take this off. So I'm just going to tape this down, run this through the die cut machine. So if you wanted it to be super simple, you could do this. We have that. Okay, we could leave it like that. Now, that's great, but if you want to make it a little bit more elevated of a card, so we have a simple thing, we're going to actually take our Misty Moonlight Marker. I'm going to just go around the edges just a little bit. You could also do this with your mango if you wanted to, or you could do it with a different one. Just kind of depends on what you want to do. I'm going to grab a few dimensionals. 
All right, I'm going to do four. And before I do that, I was going to show you one other thing I was thinking of. Say you want to add just a little something to it. And I just happen to have just a little bit of this ribbon left. This is the gold, I believe it's a 3 8 inch shimmer, edge shimmer ribbon. Shimmer edge ribbon. Bleh, words are hard. So I'm going to take a little piece of this. It doesn't have to be anything big. Just like that. So I have just a teeny piece. This is probably like three and a half inches, maybe. And the only other thing I'm going to do is I am going to switch my angle. All right, so we have a little piece of ribbon. So I have a little piece left. So I can make a couple more cards with this if I wanted to go with the same thing. I'm going to grab my, where are they? I put things away and then I can't find them. I'm going to grab my uh, blah, blah, mini glue dots. Let's see. Okay, and this is going to just help me fold this over just like so. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, let's see. Just like this. So I'm going to put a teeny bit of Stamp and Seal Plus, not a lot, on here. Going to kind of hold everything in place. Okay, and then I'm going to put some additional dimensionals, which also will kind of hold my ribbon there. I'm actually going to put one more over here. Eh, I'm going to feel like it's off balance. Let me add another one right there. And then. I'm going to pull these off. Okay. I just want to move this over just really quickly because I should have folded this. And here it is. Just reinforce it with your bone folder. And then we're going to pop this right here. All right. So that's one. Easy. That is a simple, simple, simple one. Now, if you wanted to go up one notch from the same thing, so again, I do have my blue base here. Now, what I'm going to do is I have some regular white cardstock. So basic white, not thick. So I'm going to trim this down to five and a quarter by four. Now, I know the other one's going to be a little bit bigger, but that's okay. We're still going to make it work. Then I'm going to do my same little overlappy thing. The only thing is I kind of have to decide where do I want it to go. So I'm going to line it up from the back so it's a little bit more even. Okay, just, whoops, just like so. Okay, then I'm going to grab my Stamparatus, which already has my image in it. And I'm going to open it back up. And if you remember, I made sure that I was watching when I did this. I lined it up here at one and a half inches. But also remember the way it lined up. It wasn't really my favorite. So I'm actually going to shift this over just a little bit. So I have two. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to go to two. So I just move this about a half an inch. I'm lining this up at two. Here's my magnet stuck on my scissors. And since I have this image, which is primarily in the lower right, I'm actually going to just put my magnet up here to hold it. And I just want to see what I think it looks like, which I think it looks good. But one thing I want to do, and I'm just going to look really quickly for a scrap. Oh, Jack is terrifically bored by this whole thing. And I just want to ink, get this ink off because I want it to all ink up the same. That way I don't have like a dark spot in one and a light spot in the other. Okay, so I'm going to fold this in half in case I happen to do need to do that again. So this time I'm going to still do the same thing. So I'm going to do my Misty Moonlight. However, before I actually ink it, I'm going to stamp it off once first. Because Misty Moonlight can be a little bit dark. And I just want to see what it looks like if it's a little bit lighter. So I'm going to take this. Close it, give it a press, and try it again. Now, I can always make it darker by re-inking because it's in place. Yeah, we got a little bit here. 
and a little bit down here. And let's see. So I still have kind of my little ridgy line here, which is, I don't know if it's because the way I have my stamp. So I'm going to go, I'm just turning it a little bit just to press. It kind of it kind of smoothed it out just a little bit. So I still have somewhat of a line, but it's really not as much of a line as I wanted. So I'm actually going to move this over here, close this up, slide it out of the way. And same thing again, I'm just going to remove my mask. But I'm going to try to be very gentle with this because I don't want it to bleed all over the place. So I have my just edge here. Just gonna just lightly go over. Okay, now I still have a, a kind of an uneven border. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am going to, this doesn't really have very much ink on it at all. I'm going to take my balmy blue and I'm gonna try to be super light when I do this, okay? Actually, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna get out one of my bigger ones. So I'm gonna be really light when I do this. So I'm gonna ink it up. Okay, and I'm going to come in, and I got a little smudge there, but that's okay. I'm going to come in just from this bottom side a little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to come in a little bit more. Because remember, you can't make it lighter. You can always make it darker, but you can't make it lighter. And again, I'm trying to kind of stay on this right bottom side of the card here. So I don't really want to get anything on the top side here. I'm kind of trying to go with, I don't want to say I'm trying to create a, a technique, but I'm trying to go with a, an, a certain angled look, if that makes sense. And again, if I used the regular, like if we used a regular rectangle versus a stitched, we might get a little bit softer of an edge, but this is, that's okay. This is kind of, we, we have it, you know, it is what it is. I'm just going to wipe this out just a little bit more. And we're just going to see what it looks like. All right, so now I have my other piece of Misty Moonlight and my bone folder. I'm going to just smooth this down, crease it nicely. Now, this is just, it is nice, but it's kind of like it, it needs a little something, I think. So I'm going to close up my Misty Moonlight. I'm going to grab my Daffodil Delight. Okay, so this is my pad. I'm going to make just a little pool, hopefully in the center there. Okay, so I have a little, little, little pool. So I just feel like it needs a little something. Since we're stepping this up a notch, let's take it up a full notch. So I'm going to grab one of my blender pens that is not black. And I, I have a lot of ink on it, but I kind of want to soften it just a little bit. I don't want it to be too, too dark. I'm just going to bring in a little bit. You want to be careful down in the area where you have the blue because you don't want the yellow and blue to make green because then it might kind of look a little bit weird. So before I moved up here to the cleaner spot, I'm just wiping off and starting over. Same thing over here. These are kind of really the... And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little darker and I'm going to pick a side and kind of make that side a little darker. Okay, that probably looks pretty good. So with your blender pens, depending on how hard you dip your ink in, sometimes they will stay a little inky, so you kind of just can clean it off. When it's clear, you can use it on another color. If you felt like because of the yellow that you wanted to add in some green, you also could do that. I would suggest not using a dark, dark green. So I'm going to grab, just because I have it here, soft sea foam. Let me see what this, because I don't want a lot. I really just want a very, just a little bit to the leaves. We could add a little something. Oh my goodness, you're okay. Would you relax? He's even guarding things in his sleep. So 
soft sea foam. Oh my gosh, look at that. See, this was black. I was using black and it was so cleaned out. This is normally one that I would only use for black, but it came so clean I didn't even realize it. How you like that? Okay. Oops, I forgot the rest of the stem. That will look kind of weird. Just make sure that you are consistent, that if you color something about it, that you at least go up a little farther. All right. Now, another thing that you could do if you wanted to, this would be another really simple thing to do. You could also do your watercolor pencils, and then you could just blend them with your uh, blender pens. So just to, just to show you one little thing. So this is Garden Green. So I'll just put a little bit of this just in a couple spots. I'm not really being super heavy. A little bit over here. So we have a little. And then you take your blender pen and you kind of can stretch that ink out as well. Again, it doesn't really need to be a lot. Okay. So, since we did add Daffodil Delight, and I'm looking at this, and we could certainly just run with it just like this. I think I want to add a layer of Daffodil Delight here, which I don't use very often. So I want to see what it looks like. I think of all the colors I use, I use So Saffron the most. All right, so remember, this was four by five and a quarter. So if we wanted to go up a notch, what we would do is go four and one eighth by five and a quarter, five and three eighths. All right, let's see what this looks like. It might be great, it might not be. So we're gonna layer this, it's very, very thin. And then we'll layer this here. I kind of like it, looks good. All right, so hopefully my glue is gonna flow today. Let's see, yep. Okay, so I'm going to just layer this onto, and remember the other thing with this was I did use for this white layer, it was just basic white. It was not thick basic white. And I'm trying to make sure with my fingers that I'm only touching like the white side with my clean fingers and then the other side. So you could also at this point, if you wanted to add some sort of a ribbon, you could do that. You could add, this is always great, the mesh, because it gives you a little bit of something without a lot of work. It would kind of also help to kind of camouflage that line that we have there if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave it. But if you could, if you felt like you wanted to, this would be a great time to add another additional ribbon. But I'm just trying to, to, to keep it as simple as we can, but also make it not look like it's, you know, like you just slapped it together and walked out the door. But you could make a whole bunch of these all at once. So we have that. So let's go with, we have a different thank you. We have some, a lot of different thank yous. We could even do, well, all I can say is, and then we could put thanks. So let's see. Yeah, let's do that one because I haven't used that one before. And I probably should have done this. <laughs> on uh, prior to adhering or yeah, to adhering the layers together, but we're going to get out the Stamparatus and we'll do it that way. So let us line this up. Just have that line right to the edge. Just like that. Okay, then I'm just going to take my plate, slide it in to pick up my stamp. And do we want to go with, we could do Misty Moonlight, but I'm going to, just to, to take it just a little bit more serious, I'm going to do Night of Navy, just so it's a little teeny bit darker. Okay, and I'm going to keep it out just in case I need to redo it. I'm going to make, I'm just going to do one more inking. You probably don't need it, but sometimes I like it when it has more than one. If you still have your shimmer paint that comes in the little shaky bottle, that would be a nice little finish to this as well because you could add something on there. And I do 
have my other piece of white. So I'm just going to cut this real quick and we'll put our inside panel in. So you can see I got some ink on this probably because I was fooling around with it. So I'm just going to flip it over and use the other side. But I want to show you one other thing. Occasionally, if your trimmer blade is a little bit worn out, and this might be really hard to see, but you'll get these little ridges here. Ooh, thought that was going to fall. <laughs> you'll get these little ridges. So what I do is I take my bone folder and I just run along the side and press it down. There you go. So, whoops, just touched it again. Something else is on there. Well, that's just going to have to be a... That one's going to have to be an as-is stamp right there because I don't want to cut another piece. So, that one was all I can say is I'm just going to put thanks. And now, same again. I think I'm just going to stick with the Knight of Navy for this. And I'm going to just to try to make sure I line this up somewhat straight. And then I'm going to put this kind of here on my grid paper to line it up. Stamp set. It is called Massive Thanks. And I believe, if I am not mistaken, it's in the annual catalog. There you go. That turned out. Nicely, except for my little smudge. If you have never seen this before, this is made by Tombow. It's a dual-sided eraser. This is a regular eraser. This is a sand eraser on the side, the gray end. Now, you do have to be careful because you can erase so much that you actually go through your paper. And you also do want to make sure that whatever you're erasing is completely dry, which I didn't. It was teeny, teeny bit wet. But you can erase some stuff here. So mine is going to have a little bit of a smudge, but I usually write so much of my cards, quite honestly, they probably wouldn't know if it was the difference of me writing something or me smudging something. So we're going to go with, I'm going to write a whole bunch of stuff on here. And then I'm just going to put some adhesive, pop that in. All right, so there's another one. So quite simple, just with our little layer there. So again, this one was direct, really simple, just same color ink, tone on tone. We did pop it up a little bit with mango. This one, we actually added some layers. Now to take this in a completely different direction, you also could use DSP to kind of get the same effect. So again, Massive Thanks is the stamp set that we were using. Another one that's really nice is In Your Words. This is the celebration. This will be actually wrapping up pretty soon. Um, has a lot of nice sentiments, has a, not a lot of um, nice fonts and scripts. I think I really like part of that more than anything. So um, this would be a nice one too if you wanted to say thank you to someone for something else and then you could add one of these on the inside, which hope thanks, thank you. Hope this card makes you smile. So I'm going to go with these two. But I wanted to do something a little bit different. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to pick a DSP that maybe we wouldn't necessarily use for what we think we would use it for. So let's just go with, let's see. I'm trying to decide between plaid and polka dots. And then there's also this kind of Christmas tree pattern. Let's use this one. So this is in the Peaceful Prints. Okay, so the other side of this is like a green snowflakey pattern. So let's take this and get rid of these couple pieces of paper. And I'm going to pop this over here for now. I'm going to just cut this again, just being really simple. So we want this to be three by four. So I want the three to be the shorter part and then four will be the longer Obviously, four is longer than three, and I kind of just said that a little bit silly, but I was trying to get with what I was going with directionally. I wanted it to go this way instead of this way, so that's why I wanted the four to be lengthwise. I know I went saying that totally incorrectly, but same thing again. So if we wanted to go tone on tone, this is garden green. You could also do this. Let's just say we were trying to think outside the box for some color combinations, so let me grab... 
a scrap piece, and I'm thinking this is going to be big enough. Let me see. Yep, this is a scrap piece of smoky slate. So just we'll do something, some green and some gray. Now, you could do this kind of any way you wanted to. We can see, look, there's a little smudge there. So I'm just going to end up covering this up. So we will use a piece that we normally wouldn't have. So we can either go in an eighth um, parameter or we can make it a quarter inch. It kind of depends on what you want to do. I'm going to do two. So I'm going to make this one three and one eighth. Hi, Pam. Thank you for joining me. And four and one eighth. Christian and I are doing super well. We are just, oh my gosh, it is just so busy. I think every time I say Christian, Jack is, is moaning and groaning. Maybe that's why. So we have a little thin layer there. Then I'm going to also do a layer of, where is it? Garden green to kind of bring that back. And then I think I'm going to put it onto a smoky slate layer. So I'm going to use this one just because I have it out. So, do, 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 what do I want? Three and a quarter by four and a quarter. This would also be a perfect way if you wanted to use these up for Christmas thank you cards. And I, I said smoky slate, but I'm actually going to move to gray granite. So I'm going to do, oops, gray granite. And you probably, honestly, you know, I think instead of gray granite, I take it back, I'm sorry, I'm going to do basic gray. Because basic gray is kind of an underutilized color, in my opinion, because I think people kind of always go to black. So I'm going to just trim this down. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to score it at five and a half because we are at 11. All right, and then we will do our little thank you sentiment. All right, so I'm just taking my bone folder. You could make a bunch of these if you knew you were going to have a lot of paper left over and kind of put them together. Now, since this is going to be really simple, because we have DSP, we have an, an eighth of an inch layer bigger. It's not huge at all. I'm probably going to do something with a circle of a sentiment for the thank you. So I want to add something to this. We could add ribbon, we could add an embellishment, but I'm looking at a ribbon that maybe you might not think, and I don't know, but I kind of like this, just the black and white gingham. So I think I'm gonna do that. We're gonna put our sentiment on white and then we're gonna put an inside, inside sentiment in there as well. And if anybody has anything else to say, all this thing is telling me is that Donna is watching, and I know Donna's watching because she is my buddy and she watches me do lives, but this, Facebook is silly. And the nice thing is you could use this other side if you wanted to. So if you wanted to have more of a Christmas thank you card, use the snowflake side. Or if you had maybe a, a masculine or a very neutral birthday card that you wanted to send that was somewhere near Christmas, you could use that side as well too. I think that would be really fun. All right, so I'm just layering these pieces together. Again, if you don't like the thin pieces, you could 100% do a thicker um, border. So a quarter of an inch, I'm sorry, yeah, a quarter of an inch versus an eighth of an inch. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wrap this around. Maybe I'll do like a little faux knot. Yeah, that way it's not too, I want to say it's not too girly, but it's not too plain either. I'm going to flip this over and put just a little bit of oops, stamp and seal plus that way I can anchor my ribbon. And I'm just kind of doing a little test because I want this to kind of be, oh, that's perfect. Just like that. I'm just going to trim this off. I, I tend to, even though I know this isn't really, um, taking up that much space, but if I can trim off any excess ribbon, it kind of just, whoops, it removes the bulk from the back of the card. This is a pretty thin, not bulky ribbon, so it's really not going to cause that much of an issue, but I do, I tend to try to take off the extra stuff if I can. All right, so then we have our base here, and we're going to put this on just like so. 
All right, and I just did not add <laughs> the rest of my adhesive. Hold on. Got ahead of myself. I forgot I didn't put it on the whole thing. I only put it on that one. So Stampin' Seal Plus, which is super, super strong. And I'm just kind of doing my best to make sure it's lined up mostly centered. Mm. That little pattern is throwing me off as to my lining up. That looks pretty good. All right. Alrighty, so since we have this, we could go with black. However, I think I'm going to stick with the same thing. So I'm going to very carefully get out my garden green because it's still broken. I never got a new one. And then I'm going to grab a little scrap piece. Where is it? Of white. All right, so what I said I was going to do was... Thank you. And then hope this card makes you smile. So I'm just going to do that same thank you. We did this earlier with the mango. So don't do what I do. Clean off your stamps. But I'm going lighter to darker. So I'm just going with lazy mode. Okay, so there's that. And I'm also, I want to add a white panel. I probably should have trimmed this one down and used this for the inside. But say la vie. That's, you get what you get, right? Sometimes I do want to keep that out so I can use my other sentiment. Instead of doing a circle though, again, this is the Tasteful Labels die. And let's see if we have, this one would kind of be cute with the thank you. So there's lots of different dies in here. This one's a nice one as well. That one's a little too big. Kind of stick with our little picture frame. Which one we like better? The little, actually these kind of will go with the little, the form of the, uh, or I shouldn't say the form, the shape of the pine bows. I believe that is what they are. And I'm going to move this before I stick my hand in it yet again. So I'm going to kind of line this up the best I can. Put this on here. Um, run this through the die cut machine. this out. I'm going to add a little bit of something to it. Nothing too crazy, but just a little something. And then I want to add one more piece. And I do already have my other smudge side here. So I'm going to trim this down. And worst case scenario, we can always flip it if we need to. So we have four by five and a quarter. Oh, look at that. If I don't get it dirty, it cut all that off. So I have a perfect piece of paper that worked out super well. And then same thing, hope this card makes you smile. That's going to go on the inside, hopefully without any incident. All right, move this over. My Lord, this poor dog, he's so bored listening to me make cards. It's kind of funny. I don't know if you guys can hear him or not, but he's, he's a very, very vocal dog, which I guess that's a German Shepherd thing. If anyone has a German Shepherd, you can let me know. My lab never moaned and groaned and made this many noises. She was a full, full lab. She never made this many noises. Ever. <laughs> I mean, she really rarely barked. But he has got something to say. He'll be half asleep and he'll make a noise about something. It's kind of funny. Alright, hopefully that's kind of straight. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. No biggie. All right, so let me put that where it goes. So now I'm going to add this to my inside. Just pop out some liquid glue. He's a very good guard dog, though, that's for sure. He will not let me out of his sight. One of those kind of follow you into the bathroom dogs, which is extra annoying, especially if it's in the middle of the night and you're just trying to go to the bathroom and fall back asleep without having a whole dog interactive conversation. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put a couple dimensionals on the back of this. Thank you. We're going to go with three. We'll do one, two, three. And put this here. Kind of simple, but also super nice. So... 
There is that one. That would be great for a person if you were sending something out for Christmas. And let me move this one over here. We have that. What time are we on? 6.24. I'm definitely going to have to wrap it up, unfortunately. So I'm hoping I didn't do too much yapping in the beginning. Because I know sometimes when I hear people talking a lot, I'm kind of like, okay, let's just make that card now. So thank you guys for joining me. I know it's been so long since I've seen you. And I do hope to get live again sometime soon. We do have the fall festival this weekend. So I'm thinking if any day it will be Sunday. But I'm trying to kind of stick with our sports schedule where I can do it during the evening on the weekdays. Which tends to work the best because I'm not really um, missing too much time with everything that's going on right now. Which is kind of hard. It's hard balancing everything and and life and making cards and doing fun stuff but thank you all so very much for joining me i hope you appreciate it. i hope you learned at least something a little bit new and again this one was really nice on the inside we do have that thanks we used the two different things for that we did a little bit of masking with this which kind of turned out really really fun thank you all so much for joining me millie and kathy and donna and julie and carol i really appreciate seeing all of you oh thank you that gene that said that it'll always be on the replay you can always catch it and if you're watching this after the fact on youtube which we are currently still live on facebook you're not crazy but i do all post all of my videos to youtube if you um are watching this on youtube thank you so much for tuning in make sure regardless of where you are leave a comment i love reading your comments i don't get to read as many of them on facebook because you kind of hit a limit if you're watching on YouTube, I get far fewer comments on YouTube. So if there's a question you want to ask me, you can certainly leave me a comment here. It's much easier. You can always send me a message. And if you'd like to get any of these supplies or more, you can go to my online store 24-7. It's still there. RageTheStamper.StampinUp.net. I will post these to my blog sometime later this evening or tomorrow, which if you are new or unfamiliar is RageTheStamper.com. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your week, and I hope to see you again really, really soon. Thank you so much for watching.